My name's Ann Peterman. I'm the Executive Director of Global Justice Ecology Project. Great. And what are you guys planning for Copenhagen in December? Well, the main thing that we're planning for Copenhagen around the UN climate talks is to get people plugged in all over the world in making demands of this international body to actually come up with some real solutions to climate change instead of these market-based solutions that they've been focusing on, which are, have led to nothing but more emissions. Okay. Now, wh why are you in Copenhagen now? We're in Copenhagen, uh, myself and probably about 150 or 200 other people have come to Copenhagen for this weekend for a major meeting to talk about what this mobilization will look like, how we can reach out to more people, not just what the actions will be in Copenhagen, but what the solidarity actions will be all over the world, um, and how we can all work better together. Great. And in terms of getting change in Copenhagen, what, what do you think is the most important thing activists can do? It depends on who you talk to. Uh, from the perspective of Global Justice Ecology Project, we really believe the UN Climate Convention is broken, that it's completely ineffective, that it's completely controlled by corporate interests, and that it needs to be dismantled and replaced with something else, something that has participation from grassroots communities, impacted communities, and people who are concerned, rather than uh, as happened in Poznan, the 1,500 corporate lobbyists that dominated the uh, discussion and the conversation there. Okay, so what's, what, what's the pathway to it? Is it civil disobedience? Is it uh, rallies? Is it I think it's, we're going to need every tool in the toolbox if we're going to effectively come up with something new, some other new strategy on climate change. Uh, the, what's happened up to, up to now has not worked. So what we're trying to do is something new looking toward some of the successes of the anti-globalization movement, for example, the shutdown in Seattle of the WTO talks there, which helped create a chain reaction within the talks themselves, empowering some of the, um, some of the countries in the global south that were being railroaded until that point, giving them more of a say, more um, of a solidarity, if you will, with people on the outside, showing them that even people in the global north don't accept what these countries in the global north are doing, using those models to say, how can we do something similar? How can we empower and give our support and solidarity to the countries all around the world who are facing the greatest impacts from climate change, yet have not contributed to the crisis? Okay. So what's the most important thing we can do as activists to, to try to affect change? Uh, for, for me and uh, in my personal position is that we need to make sure that there's no more business as usual for the corporate climate criminals. Right now they're being allowed to continue their massive uh, pollution with fossil fuel emissions. The fossil fuel extraction is not, um, is not being abated, it's continuing as usual. There are new, even more destructive plans for mining fossil fuels, such as with the tar sands in Alberta. Um, this is continuing on and on with nothing except false solutions being proposed, false solutions like destructive biofuel production, nuclear power, so-called clean coal, uh, and these false solutions have got to go. We need to actually look at stopping the emissions and coming up with real solutions. Now, the sort of conservation and activist movement is sometimes fragmented. You know, there's not, you know, the sort of right often wins because the left is unorganized. Do you have any ideas of how we can get past that, or is that what you're trying to do here? That's one of the things we're trying to do here. There are many diverse opinions coming to this meeting, different ideas of how we can best get our goals accomplished. And uh, from my perspective, the best way to deal with that is to agree to disagree. Is to say, we all want the same thing ultimately. We all want climate change stopped and a, a real process in place to come up with solutions. How we do it is going to require a broad, broad diversity of approaches. Therefore, we don't need to all agree on one thing or another thing. In fact, that weakens us because it's focusing only on one tactic or strategy where what we really need is a broad diversity of tactics and strategies. Just as in the natural world, diversity means a stronger ecosystem, uh, in the movement, diversity of approaches, diversity of ideas, diversity of tactics means a stronger movement. Okay. Now, if you were given the floor at the climate change conference in December, in front of all the delegates, and you had two minutes to, to tell them what you thought, what would you say? Well, that's a good question. I guess I would challenge them to um, stop the process as it's been going, which has been completely useless, 
and come up with something new. I would challenge them to get rid of the corporate lobbyists, to get the corp corporate uh, representatives off of their delegations. Um, I would challenge the countries in the global north to sit down and be quiet and let the countries in the global south that are suffering the impacts have their say and come up with some new strategies and ideas. Um, and mainly, I guess, I would just want to make it clear that we cannot have business as usual. There has to be a change. Yeah. Okay. So what, what one thing we're trying to do is, is start a sort of a, a way to band together conservation groups, mm -hmm. sort of like almost a union of conservation groups where mm -hmm. they all sort of work under one basically structure that helps organize everybody, helps deliver all of their messages to the public, and helps sort of, I guess, push their movement as efficiently as possible. So it's called United Conservationists. And what it is is basically a way of getting what's necessary in Copenhagen to the media, to the public, so the public can start pressuring their governments with a list. This is what we need. Did you have any advice or any ideas on how you think we should put that together? Well, uh, I guess there are, at this point, there are a number of different climate movements that are coming together. and They're working on different pieces of the puzzle. So I would say connecting with as many of those as possible to get everybody's ideas and get them all, um, even like I said, if they're not all coming from the same place, that, that really doesn't matter. The fact is that they're all out there and they're, we're all working for the same basic thing. So if, if there's some way to, to move past those traditional divides and come up with what our common ground really is um, and go from there, I would say that would be, and, and get as much diversity of input as possible. Yeah. That's not a, that's not an easy thing. That's a tall order. So this weekend, what would be good for us is if we could let let the whole sort of group know what we're doing and that we're trying to push their movement and that if there's anything they could tell us to help, you know, to help us help you, that would be amazing. Okay, no problem. I think yeah, come this evening and uh, introduce yourselves and what you're trying to accomplish, and I imagine people will be very interested to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, um, anything else you think I should know about what you've got going on? Um, let me think. Just that uh, I think I just want to emphasize that the movements that are coming together here in Copenhagen and around the world are really being led by constituencies in the Global South and indigenous peoples who are on the front lines of the climate crisis. But it's going to be um, people in, for example, the United States, which has a huge historical responsibility for global warming, as well as being the number one uh, impediment toward effective action at the international level, which actually ironically started with Al Gore, um, that we really have a special responsibility to take action in our own countries, as well as at these international climate uh, conferences because of that historical responsibility. So I just want to make sure that people in the countries that are putting out the emissions understand that it's critical that they get involved to make sure that their governments change what's happening in their own countries.